Good morning, everybody. It's, um, I'm very glad to, to be in front of you, so many of you today, to present our paper. And um, that is a joint work with uh, Mikkel Baslin from, uh, from uh, HIVA in Leuven and from Walter Gelade, my colleague from the National Bank. And we raised the question of um, uh, the, the, the green link between uh, uh, the green side of the labor market and we raised the question of will the labor shortages, which is a very Belgian and current problem, and skill mismatch be a problem in the green transition currently? And I will start the presentation with one typical Belgian example, I would say, um, that happened two weeks ago, effectively, so, so that's really recent. And the National Railway Company in Belgium just announced that they they had to delay their plan. They, had a, they, had, they still have a multi-year plan to extend their, their train supply. And in fact, they had to delay it just because of one reason, one main reason. They don't find the right skills. They don't find the right people on, on the labor market. And especially in Flanders and in Brussels, they will not be enough train drivers. And that's, that tries the question of the impact of the labor shortages on our transition towards a more a greener labor market and a, a decarbonized economy. And in fact, the locomotive engine driver, which is one of the category we, we, we study uh, in our paper, but we, we, we have a, a relatively macro analysis here, um, is a green shortage job. And how large is this category of the green shortage jobs? What are the key defining features? Who is transitioning? Who transitions from um, yeah, a non-green, non-shortage job, for example, to a green shortage job? That is the typical question we, we uh, ask into our, into our paper. And in fact, the motivation of the paper comes from uh, the intersection of two dimensions. The first, the, 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 the growing demand that we expect uh, for, for the labor market in the coming decades or the coming years uh, for green skills, for green jobs. And in fact, we will need to renovate our houses, we'll need more efficient uh, production of energy, we'll need to recycle much more, to have renewable energy. We, we saw in the, in the previous presentation that indeed, in the coming years, we'll need more skills related to the... the, um, the the um, willingness to mitigate, in fact, the human impact on the economy. We'll need to decarbonize the economy, and that comes with skills. And in, in the same time, in the short term, we, we, we are facing uh, labor shortages. And that's very important in Belgium. We're a champion, and that may be a bad thing, but we are currently at a, at a very high level of vacancy rate, and so the labor shortages have a huge impact um, an important impact on, on the economy, on the production, but also over the long term on the investment plans. And we saw that that was one of the, the graph of the governor um, sooner. In fact, labor shortages are impacting the labor market importantly. And what we will need also in the coming years, that was, uh, that was also said in the, in the previous presentation, will create many green jobs, but most importantly, we'll need to reallocate. So the labor reallocation will be much more important than the, than the, the job creation. Um, so here, that's why in our paper, we focused rather on the transition from one job to the other, rather than on the, evolution, the evaluation of the stock of green jobs that we have or that we, we would need. We really, our key variables is the transition to a green job or here, as you can see, to the transition to a green shortage job. That's a subset of the, uh, the, the, the green job category that is maybe more important for two reasons, for economic reason and climate related reason. And the Belgian case, because not only because uh, I'm working at the National Bank of Belgium, but the Belgian case is studied in, in, in that paper because it's, it's relatively well suited. We have a high labor shortage, we have a relatively static labor market, and a very high uh, inactivity rate. And so that's why also we, we, will, we study in that paper, we study also the transition from 
non-employment to job. Um, we try to contribute to the literature in, in, in three ways, and there is a, a relatively wide literature on what is a green job, um, and, and the literature is, is, is growing, and we, we have more and more paper on that, and some very recent paper, not on the, the, the evaluation of what a green job is, but also on the transitions, and we see some, some policy papers very, very important and interesting. Also, we, we are studying the, um, the labor shortages, and so we try to contribute to the literature on that way too. The skills are very important, both for green jobs and for the labor shortages, so that will be how one of our key um, uh, explanatory variable, of course. And the contribution of this paper is, is, is threefold. First, we, we study, we really focus on, the, on this subset of green jobs, so the green shortage jobs, those ones who will be difficult to, to fill also, and we focus on transition rather than on the stock. So those, uh, we, we really analyze the, the, only the people who are moving from one job to the other. And, and this is an empirical paper, and who says empirical papers, who says also data set, and we try to combine different data sets. The first and the main one will be the labor force survey and the longitudinal um, uh, part of the, the labor force survey. Since 2017, we can isolate the people who are moving from one job to the other and also, in the labor force survey, we have many different data, many different aspects related to the labor market. And then we need to, to, to find out which job is green, which job is in shortage, and that's why we use some classification, green job classification, that's an international one, ONET converted to, 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 uh, to the ISCO. And, and the, how our definition of green job is relatively wide. Um, that's something that is important also for technical reason, but also for conceptual reason. In fact, we, we don't look only at the people with very green skills. We don't look only at the uh, environmental engineer. We have a relatively broad set of, of uh, jobs. So notably the electricians, the, um, the technicians in, in a power plant factory, for example. All those jobs are also the train driver, for example, we'll need more of them in the coming years, and in such, we consider it as a green job. Um, and then we have the classification of jobs of occupations in shortage, and for that in Belgium, we have uh, regional um, 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 employment services um, who, who publish every year a list of uh, jobs that are considered to be in shortage, so the, the, the list of critical function, and that's established at the regional level, and we use it as such, and every year, so they, they, they have to, to publish it, and they convert it for us into the ESCO, so that we can put all the, the data together. And so at the end, we, we end up with um, four different categories, so the green shortage, green non-shortage, non-green shortage and non-green non-shortage, four different categories that are relatively uh, different. And in particular, when you compare the green shortage and green non-shortage, you have two, diff two very different uh, kind of uh, categories. Uh, the green shortage are less educated, for example, um, and the green non-shortage tend to be, uh, yeah, tend to require more uh, educated profiles. So here, Merging the two together would lead to uh, possibly to, to, a, to a mistake. And you can see also, you have different, different examples here. The Howard train driver is still here. Um, some, some people in some, some uh, occupations into, into the, the renovation. So we have a re relatively broad set and large set of different jobs. Also, we have some non-green shortage jobs the teachers, the people in hospital, those jobs are not really green in essence. And so there we, we, we have still shortage jobs, but not green. Okay. Um, and the last part I didn't explain, I didn't um, uh, explain until now, is the, the categorization of skills. And there, 
the skills are particularly important and we measure it with the ONET data. And those ones are basic skills, really the basis um, um, in terms of skills, not knowledge, not what you learn at schools, but really the skills. And you have seven categories. And so you have the content skills, which are the ab ability to read, the mathematics, science, and so on. And then you have also the technical skills. The technical skills, this is one of the most important kind of skills for the green jobs. Um, we have the, um, the ability to, to the, the repairing skills, the troubleshooting, the technology design, the, um, um, yeah, you have 13 different categories of, of sub-skills, if you want. And as you can see in our two examples, but those one are representative in a way, the technical skills that are required for the green shortage jobs are much more elevated. So that's where we, we have a lack of skills, um, um, in a way. Um, but for the rest, you see, you see, you don't see, yeah, much of a difference. So uh, now let's look at the employment in Belgium, and uh, let's put every job, every um, worker into one category. And at the end, when we we end up with a relatively large uh, share of. Uh, um, uh, jobs in shortage, we have the dark colors are in shortage, and you can see that half of the jobs in Belgium are concerned by shortage. We have a wide definition, keep that in mind, of course, but 50% is not nothing, of course. Um, and then you have the, the, the share of green jobs, and there it's, it's about it's 34%. So the share of, uh, of green job or, or jobs that are concerned by green skills or um, um, that are expected to be uh, in high demand in the coming years due to this green uh, revolution, you, you see it's 30%. So at the end, uh, the green shortage job is about 17% of our jobs currently. That's relatively elevated. And you see some differences across region. In Brussels, you, you have much more, you have more uh, uh, shortages that are not green, for example and the industry is less important, the construction is less important, so the green shortage section will be relatively small. In Flanders, uh, shortage issue is much more important, as you can see. So who are those um, workers in, in, in dark green? Uh, it's mainly male. This, this is uh, male workers. Th this was the case for the green jobs in general, but here that's even worse, I would say. Um, or even more pronounced for the uh, um, green shortage job. Uh, also something that is different from, from the literature is the level of education that is required for the green shortage job. It is, it, typically it is low and medium educated. So that will be one of, her, uh, one of the key challenges for the, the, the labor market. We'll need more people willing to work into those, uh, into those sectors or uh, activities with a relatively low um, uh, background. Less in Brussels, more full-time position, more permanent contract. It means that the, the, the employment conditions are not really bad and more in the manufacturing and in the, 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 in the uh, construction sector. In terms of salary, that's, uh, that's uh, in terms of uh, uh, wages, that, that is also uh, one important aspect. We see that the green jobs are relatively well paid. We, we, we have a difference between green shortage, green non-shortage, and on the other hand, non-green uh, shortage and, 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 and non-shortage, you, you see a gap of about 10%. So it means that the wages tend to be, tend to be higher for the green jobs. But you, you can see that also the difference between categories, they change across the level uh, of education that is required. And we see, for example, that for the low educational attainment, we, we, clear, we clearly see that the green shortage jobs are better paid. And to, to a certain extent, it's, it's, it's logical. But for the high educational uh, attainment, you see that the green non-shortage tend to be better paid. You see clearly two different patterns uh, depending on the level of education. Um, and as I, I, as I said before, um, the, uh, we, we are not only focusing on, 
on um, how many jobs we have, so the stock of people, but we, we also focus and we mainly focus on the transition between jobs. And so who is transitioning? Who, who is moving from one category to the other? Well, the first thing is, um, is that you, you, you see most of the people stay within the same category. So 93, 94% of the people, they stay logically within the same uh, category and and among those most yeah, most of the people stay within the same job with within the same ESCO code they don't change so that's logical so when we focus on on the green versus non green categories we see that the links are uh, a bit more elevated between green shortage and green non shortage we see that when you tend to have a green job, you, 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 you tend to keep it. And when you have a non-green job, you tend to keep it too. Um, something that is striking also is that people tend to be more attract attracted by the green non-shortage job. And that's logical to, to, to a certain extent, but it means also that our problems will, yeah, it's not expected to move away uh, very soon. So we have more people, yeah, uh, much more people moving to green non-shortage when they are initially in non-green jobs than for, for, uh, when, when you look at the green shortage. So it means simply that yeah, we have a, a bottleneck here, a, a very big problem uh, if we want to move uh, forward for the green transition. So we, then we, we try to, to find out uh, what was driving uh, someone to move from uh, uh, another category so to a green shortage job. And so the probability to move to a green shortage job from another category is 1.6%. So quantitatively uh, speaking, I would say we have an issue here. We don't have enough people moving to those jobs. Um, and it represents, of course, uh, potentially um, um, a big problem over the long run, of course. So quantitatively speaking, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's much lower than for the other categories. That's, that's uh, one of, um, one of the, the, the key results. What is driving the people to, to move to green shortage jobs, it, it, you see mostly skills. Um, um, skills are positively related to, to those transition, and you see content skills, for example, are positively and significantly related to uh, the, the, the transition to a green shortage jobs. It means that acquiring new skills, mathematics, science, and so on, and of course it will enhance more movement. It is expected to enhance more movement. Um, one of the most robust results of, the, of this paper is related to technical skills, and that, really, that is really constant across all the specification Technical still skills are related to, uh, to the true transition to green shortage job. And just to give you, give you an idea, um, if you increase, um, yeah, so the skills are, I, I didn't mention that, I forgot that in, in, in slide, but skills are measured on a one to five scale. So one is not important at all, five is extremely important. So when you increase the technical skills by one, yeah, uh, one, uh, one point, then you increase the probability to move to a green shortage job by 50%. So it means that really we have a lever here for, the, for all the technical skills. And so it would move from 1.6 to 2.4%, for example. So it, it really means that those skills are amazingly important. And uh, then you have the resource management skills. This is yeah, also the material resource, resources, and this is mostly for highly educated people. Finally, you have also the sectors of activity. The sector of activity, we have uh, all the, the, um, the coefficients are positive and significant, meaning that the reference category is uh, the non-market services is not attracting those changes those uh, transitions. So it means that people from non-market services are not moving very often to green shortage job. And that's an issue because most, yeah, we have many jobs there uh, in the case of Belgium. Um, 
another result is, is related to also to the skill distance. Uh, we were talking about the skills, the level of skills. You have also the skill distance. So between two jobs, you have the, the distance in terms of skills, aggregate. Uh, and then you, 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 can, you can have an idea of uh, to what extent this could enhance or, or uh, slow down um, a transition. And here, um, we, we, we try to, to measure the effect on the potential transition. The potential transition uh, uh, here consists of the 10 closest job to, uh, to, to someone. So you have a worker and we take the 10 closest green shortage jobs, for example. So the most likely transition for, for somebody uh, um, for the green, short, uh, green shortage transition. And what we see here is that it is expected to be more disruptive. So we expect for the green shortage job transition to be much more disruptive than for the others, meaning that you will need to acquire more skills. You will need to, and we know uh, that uh, people in Belgium don't like disruptive, uh, disruptive changes. And in fact, it has an impact. It has an effective impact on the, uh, the effective transition. So ex ante transition are expected to be more disruptive in terms of skills acquisition. But what about the observed transition? So we look at the people who are effectively, and we compare the, the initial job and their final job, and we compare the skill distance between those two. And, and we got just the opposite result, meaning that the people tend to have a bias with respect to that and to select and to pick up the easiest transition. So it's um, just to take an illustrative example, we have a general office clerk and on the table, Exante, he has three different choices. He can be a train driver, he can be, he or she can be a transport clerk, or she, he or she can be a manager. The first uh, solution will be very disruptive in a way because she or he will, be, uh, will, will need to acquire new skills and the arrow is relatively large. The second one, you work more or less in the paperwork, so this is relatively close in terms of skills. And the, the last one, you will need to, to acquire new skills, management skills, and so that's pretty distance. And what we see in the data is that, in fact, de facto, this, the first one is very uh, less likely. We don't see that often, and that will be an issue. The, the last one, we, we, we can see it, but effectively, that's not a green job. So that's why we see, qualitatively speaking, we have another issue. Um, finally, we, we, we looked also at the transition from non-employment to job, and maybe the inactive people or the unemployed people could be the solution. But what we see, and, and here we are talking about the inactive that have or had a recent uh, link with the labor market only, and we see that they are even further away from the workers. So the solution here is not an easy one, and we'll need to reskill um, from a general perspective the inactive before they would fit into those green shortage jobs. They are further away than the workers, except for one category, one category of skills, the technical skills, where everybody is really far away. Conclusion, we have the green shortage jobs that are relatively important. Uh, According to, to us, that's a subset that is relatively uh, crucial, pivotal for the green transition. Um, they need, they, the, the, that kind of job requires strong technical skills. And also, if we have a dynamic uh, analysis, uh, very disruptive changes. Whereas, you know, people don't like disruptive changes, particularly in Belgium, apparently. So the issue here is quantitative. We don't have enough people moving. Too few transitions, but also qualitative, because the, the, even the transitions that happen, in fact, those ones are not disruptive. Um, not very, and the, the disruptive transitions fail to happen. So those problems, we, we consider that those ones are very difficult to, to address. We are talking about new skills, about um, upskilling the inactive people, reshaping the training systems. Those ones will require years of structural reform to support the green shortage jobs. So 
to enable uh, disruptive transitions, we'll need some, um, some structural reform on that respect. I will stop here.